welcome to Significant TV. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and we'll be featuring significant stories from significant entrepreneurs. Today, my guest is Jeffrey Kent, CEO of Cogniz IT Advisors, LLC, and you can find them on the web at CogniceIT.com. So, Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for, uh, for inviting me. Sure. So... You know, one of the sh things that we talk about in the show are actually just three things. Okay. Um, one is significant, mm -hmm. one is business, and one is results. Okay. And I always like to sort of understand from entrepreneurs, what is a significant moment um, in your life that influenced you as an entrepreneur? And you can go back as far as you want, okay. Um, okay. But, but share that because I think it's really informative and it tells okay. a lot about you and your values. Um, so it's not a question I think a lot about, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I will take you back a ways because uh, mm -hmm. I've probably been an entrepreneur since I was about 12 years old. I love uh, it. And so, um, you know, probably the, 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 if, I, if I did think about that um, and think about what Im, Im influenced me and impacted, you know, my career choices, it's probably, um, you know, uh, every summer, you know, I, uh, I was born in Martinsville, Virginia, mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, but I'm a military brat. We've lived all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so every summer, um, uh, I have, you know, a brother, two sisters, I'm the youngest. Uh, so my parents would pack us all up, send us to Martinsville to spend the summer with my, my grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, and all of our cousins would come as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I spent every summer with all of my cousins every mm -hmm. summer. Uh, and my mother's oldest brother uh, was, uh, he owned a taxi cab company in Martinsville. Oh, wow. uh, But he's the only entrepreneur in the family, you hmm. know, uh, of his generation. Okay. And, um, and it didn't impact anyone else because I'm the only entrepreneur in my generation. <laughs> but uh, but oh. for some reason, I guess I was paying attention to what he was doing mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it was having this profound impact on me. Mm. So I think it was, and what I probably found fascinating was you know, he um, at, at a point had the largest black-owned taxi cab company in the state of Virginia. So he wow. was doing a lot of acquisitions, okay. and then ultimately he got his business was acquired. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just all of you know those mm -hmm. transactions mm -hmm. right. that um, um, you know kind of intrigued me. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my, my parents are, are engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, they got engineering degrees from Tuskegee Institute back in the early 1950s. Mm -hmm. um, I, I tell people that trait skipped my generation, mm -hmm. but actually it, I, I was thinking about this a little bit earlier. I, I did pick up the trait to build. It's just that I like to build businesses. Right, you know? right, right. So, uh, yeah. And you do. You, you have built several <coughs> yeah, businesses yeah, and you've influenced many right, businesses. Right, right, right. Um, and engineers think in a detailed manner, and structure is important. Right, right, right. right. Um, and that's that's important in business. Yeah, yeah I, I realize uh, this happened when I was in college. I was graduating, and my mm -hmm. parents came to my graduation. I went to the University of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and my parents, oh my, my father was stationed in Syracuse, New York, mm -hmm. when I graduated. So the only time they came to visit me was during graduation. <clears throat> and my parents came, uh, walked into my apartment, my mother, of course, uh, and I think this is a mother trait, <laughs> just walked in and barged in and, you know, had oh, son, oh, yeah. Had yeah, I can vouch for that. Was living. <laughs> right. And, I can uh, that. you know, go, you know, so she makes her round, comes back out, and she says, you're just like your father. I was insulted at the time, but but now that I think about it, I, uh, uh, you know, it's one of the things I'm actually very proud of because I, I, mm. I Love my fa my father, respect him tremendously, and and just un unbelievably proud of everything he's accomplished. So, mm. you know, to 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 think that I uh, even got a, a slither of of <laughs> what he has um, makes me feel very proud. Wow, well, that is a really cool story. And as I'm listening to you talk about um, an uncle who owned a taxi cab business yeah. that acquired other businesses. Yeah. Did you ever have conversations with him when you were going back and forth or this is all kind of looking back and understanding that that was the yeah. significant influence? I mean, interestingly enough, I really never talked to him about his business. Mm, okay. um, so, you know, being in, in Virginia all summer, mm -hmm. you know, we would go and, you know, I'll 
I'll, I'll call it work. It really was <laughs> work. But, you know, I mean, we occasionally helped out. We would go mm -hmm. to the taxi cab company and, mm -hmm. you know, talk to customers and things like that. Um, you know, I have cousins who actually ended up working for my mm -hmm. uncle at, at mm -hmm. points in their career. Um, that, that never happened with me. Uh, mm. But um, but we did spend you know a decent amount of time at the taxi cab wow. company, and I think it was just you know I, I'm I'm a big observer, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I just I like to take everything in. Um, I t you know and you probably <laughs> won't be able to tell it from this interview <laughs> here. I actually don't talk that much. I, I, I spend much more time observing other people and, and mm -hmm. environments, mm -hmm. which I think has a lot to do with me traveling so much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'm just really curious about. The world and and why things are the way they are. That's kind of um, engineering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, so, but so I think you know, for me as a kid, I was I was just observing everything, mm. and um, mm. so I wasn't really talking to him about the business, but I was observing everything he was doing, mm -hmm. and 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 again, I, I interestingly enough, I've talked to family members who saw all of the traits that I exhibit today in me as a kid, mm, but I okay. didn't see them in myself, okay. you know. Sure, sure. So, because I've always wondered, how did I end up being the way I am and doing mm -hmm. the things I do? Mm -hmm. And, but I've talked to, you know, I remember having a conversation with w one of my uncles, and he's like, oh, I knew exactly, I knew, I knew. <laughs> you, it's not a surprise at, at all to uh -huh. me that you're doing uh -huh. what you're doing. Right. He's like, I, I, remember, I could see that when you're like five years old. That's really you know, cool, which so. is a which is a wonderful transition. I mean, right now, what are you doing in your business, and how did you get there? Okay. Yeah. So, um, what I've actually done uh, so about two and a half years ago, I spun off from uh, co-founders of mm -hmm. Cognus, mm -hmm. um, and um, um, so they started a, a another information technology company. Mm -hmm. I decided, um, uh, as I was reflecting on what do I do next. Um, so, I was dealing with, you know, splitting from my business partners, trying to figure out what I do next. Mm -hmm. um, we also had a, a family health crisis and that, mm -hmm. you know, I had a, my oldest sister was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. um, wow. we, we ended up losing wow. her about a year and a half ago. Oh, but, um, but this all happened right around the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm running, you know, trying to spend as much time as possible with her. Um, she lived mm -hmm. in New York City. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and you know, in those two-hour drives back and forth, mm -hmm. um, got to do a lot of thinking about sure. you know, kind of what do I do next? What do I love to do? And and um, and I came to realize that um, that what I'm really passionate about is mentoring other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, again, I like to build businesses, right. and um, and I wasn't passionate about technology. Oh, you know, okay. Um, okay. And, and really, the business started as a result of me mentoring two young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I wrote their business plan, and and then they, you know, said, "Well, you know, no one's going to take us seriously. This isn't right. Silicon Valley. This is Philadelphia. Right. Right. You know, we're right. running an IT business. We're in our early twenties. We need a gray-haired person that oh, you know, the gray you know, hair <laughs> that that can actually run the business." So they said, "You know, would you consider joining us, buying equity in the business, running in the company?" Which mm -hmm. which I did, and mm -hmm. you know, we we grew unbelievably fast mm -hmm. and uh, won we awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were able to accomplish what we wanted mm -hmm. to accomplish, which was you know allowing them to spin off a business mm -hmm. and. Um, but then, as you know, as I said, as I reflected on what do I do next, um, realized that that when I boiled down what I had really accomplished, which was mentoring two mm -hmm. young entrepreneurs, was what I was really passionate about. Right, right. And um, when I thought about the things I do that I don't get paid to do, okay, you know. Okay. Um, it is really all about mentoring other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I used to teach entrepreneurship at Lincoln University mm -hmm. years ago. Um, I've been judging Drexel's business plan competition for uh -huh, the last six years. Right? Right? I've hired more interns than I've hired employees in Cognos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, I just love mm -hmm. you know convincing other people to d to be as crazy as I am and do <laughs> and do what I do. I think so, they call that consulting. Yeah, right? yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> okay, just, so, just for clarity. Right, and um, and so. Um, I have an MBA from the Wharton School of Business. Mm -hmm. When I um, finished Wharton, I managed a professional athlete's portfolio for a couple of years and then mm -hmm. went to Deloitte Consulting here in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Solid so, background. Right, right. right. So, um, again, reflecting on what do I do next, I realized that management consulting was the vehicle mm -hmm. to allow me to mm -hmm. do what I like to do. Great. You know, so Cognis IT, I have morphed in mm -hmm. back into a performance improvement management consulting firm. Mm -hmm. I focus on working with 
entrepreneurs who want to um, experience exponential growth of their mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. um, because what I've realized in growing Cognis, prior to starting it, I, re I read a lot about you know, how do you grow a business? So mm -hmm. I, I read stories of companies who had experienced, um, ex you know, uh, very, very fast growth. Exponential growth. And, um, and uh, through the, all the various things I read, um, came up with, you know, m my, I synthesized my own formula Great. for success Great. and then tried to implement it at Cognizant and, mm -hmm. and realized after the fact that this stuff actually works. Hey, you know? hey. So, <laughs> bottle it up and sell it. Right, right, Consulting. Right. So what I'm trying yeah. to do now is, as I said, work with um, entrepreneurs that want to experience rapid mm -hmm. growth but may not understand how do you do that. Absolutely. And Absolutely. show them what I did growing mm -hmm. Cognizant. Because um, there are, you know, you've got you, the playbook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, if you look yeah. at successful companies, um, successful companies tend to share, you know, common traits. Right, right. And um, and those traits can be infused into any company. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And and having the ability to have a consultant and advisor on hand makes right. a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Because you can you can tell people how to do, you know. So so there there are elements like. You know, you got to understand how you know. It's people talk about value pro right. proposition, which right. is what it is. But right. but it's really how do you how do you figure out what's unique about you that mm -hmm. no one else, you know, has does. Mm -hmm. um, that that's it's easy to say, but it's it's difficult to figure that Absolutely. out. Um, Absolutely. How do you fight the inclination of an entrepreneur to because you want <laughs> to make money, you know, and you have to pay bills. You try right. to be everything to everybody, right. which right. is the absolute quickest way to failure. Right. What you have to do is focus on a niche mm -hmm. uh, and, and focus on a niche that you can monopolize. Right. Because right. once you have uh, achieved um, sustainability focusing on a niche, it's very easy to expand outside that niche. Great. Um, it's, um, um, it's, it's moving away from the traditional push pushing a product, push selling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to pull selling. Right. So you've right. got to find a, a Big Brother Alliance partner mm -hmm. that um, right. that can begin to you know feed you leads. You know, right. um, it, it's taking those leads and converting those into sales, and then creating you know, I'll call them marquee customers, right. where you know a customer that is buying everything you sell versus mm -hmm. only one or two products right. from you right. um, is, okay. is is an extremely committed customer and is probably going to be very rabid, uh, you know, rabid about talking to other people about what you do. Absolutely. You know, so they'll I'm actually become much more successful. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they, they'll, they'll be much more successful in selling your products and services <laughs> than anyone right. you could ever hire. Terrific. It's, it's you know, identifying and bringing in the right team, mm -hmm. you know, so you have someone that can focus on creating the relationships that build the company externally, someone that can focus internally on bringing the systems in place so as all this business starts to come in, mm -hmm. you can handle it efficiently. Excellent. It's having the financial mind that understands mm -hmm. that you know every business uh, can be boiled down to four or five metrics, that if you track you know these four or five financial metrics, and you stay on top of them, monitor and measure them. Um, you will, I'm you with will you. scale. I'm you with know, you, whether you want to or not. You know? <laughs> okay. Um, and, it, and then okay. it's and it's uh, assembling a um, uh, a board of essentials experts. Right. That so what's different about you know everybody can form a board, but what's what's different is is um, adding two components. One is. Um, people who have done what you're trying to do already, mm -hmm. who won't view you as, as a competitor. You will view them as a competitor, right. but they won't. So, this is the instance, the the the, um, uh, uh, the example I'll use is as a you know having a management consulting firm. It would benefit my management consulting firm to bring on uh, a board member that's at say McKinsey. Okay. You know, now I view McKinsey as a competitor because they're in the management consulting space. But Trust me, McKinsey they does don't. not view they me don't. as a competitor. So let's let's stop right there sure, because sure, you absolutely. are giving excellent nuggets okay. and you have really kind of covered one of the other topics, which are results. Sure. And we are almost out of okay, time. Okay. <laughs> so I want to thank you for sure. being here, um, Jeffrey, and and share with our audience that my guest today was Jeffrey Kent, CEO of Cognis IT Advisors, LLC. And you can find them on the web at CognisIT.com. Jeffrey, thanks again for being here. Thank you for inviting and me. And to the audience, Significant TV, significant stories from significant entrepreneurs.